Alright, hello everyone. Uh, I'm here doing something a little different for my channel specifically, and uh, kind of recording something instead of playing it live. So, um, I noticed that there is, uh, last night, I was watching a stream, someone was talking about the Shrine of Secrets, and I saw there's a perk in there that I wanted, and uh, I need to play a couple games to get the Iridescent Shards, I need to get the perk. So I figured I'd hop on, play a couple games, record them, and see, uh, see how this goes, see if you guys like it. I'm just gonna jump right in here. I also have a daily, uh, daily challenge for anyone who's, you know, used to, like, MMOs and shit like that. Um, <clears throat> there's a little challenge that they'll do day by day, uh, and I have one for... Uh, trappy boy here, so I'm gonna play trappy boy. Try to catch us some survivors and bear traps. Get us some extra points, just cause. <clears throat> I think I need to play. I think I only need to play two games, two maybe three. I don't even need to play that many. I don't have that much time in this little recording session. I probably only have about two games worth of time, but um, we'll see how they go. What all happens, but um, but yeah, um, tell me what you guys think. Anybody who checks this, this style of thing out, um, I'll probably be do more of I, I would probably do more of this game, um, for recording purposes, and then there's a couple other games I have in mind. And as you know, as well, some of you may know, I guess some people might not know that my normal style of content. Um, there might be a couple of games that I would do, like, runs of off-stream and just kind of upload them on YouTube. Stuff that isn't, like, the highest priority for the stream, but it's something that I enjoy and I want to do, so. <clears throat> um, I guess there's not really too much else to talk about other than like gameplay kind of things um whenever i play this game in particular i'll probably talk about some things that i'm doing and give general insight i don't know a whole lot about this game i'm not amazing at it uh, one thing that i always make note of when i'm in this lobby is i make sure i know all of the characters in the game there are two davids there is a nia i believe it's a nia or a meg um and a jeff so and that's just a kind of, it, it doesn't really matter when you don't have that many, when you have perks, but there's a perk in the game called Barbecue and Chili, and it's really important to hook each individual survivor at least one time when you have that perk. That's why I try to pay attention. Um, it also helps when the survivors have perks, like Decisive Strike, so you can kind of keep track of things that um, an individual survivor might have. That way you know when you down them, or when you go to start a chase on them, you know what you're doing. <clears throat> so, uh, some general trapper stuff. Uh, you never want to put your trap generally inside a loop like this, or inside the pallet, because uh, it's very obvious, very easy to see, and they can kind of just run around it. Um, you want to generally try to put it. Whoops, is space not not in one? <laughs> uh, you generally try to put it where the survivor is going to be running after they've gone through the pallet as a general little tip there. Now, I know this generator was started, so they should be around here somewhere. Now, an uh, obvious place would be there. People, people tend to like doing that a lot more than they really should, but uh, I'm not going to stick around too much. As you saw, I have spent a little bit of, a little bit too much time Doing things that are not relevant. It started to cost me a little bit. And objects like that, um, the survivor can kind of stay out of your vision, like this guy did for a little bit. So you want to make sure that you do a full circle around it. Keep going. <clears throat> Just make sure that you don't uh, get caught. Now you see my trap right there. Um, he could have just ran to the right if he had wanted to. <clears throat> and he would have been caught by, or if he would have went to the right if the, the pallet was, or the trap rather was in the pallet, so. Where did he go? 
Got him right here. Now I can hear this gin is really close to my left, so I'm gonna go give it a look see. Like they have ran over to this side. Oh wow. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, huh? Oh, there they are. Howdy, good sir. I figured with the crouch that I would have been able to reach him, but all good. And there's a, there's a couple of ways you can play the game. Um, you can kind of play the quote-unquote intended way, and as soon as somebody gets unhooked, you can just kind of tunnel them and then rehook them and play like a dick, basically. <laughs> or you can be uh, a little bit nicer and not tunnel their dick off. And I try to play, try to play nicer. Um, because you know, when you play nice, everyone gets to have fun. Nice that hard. I'm just gonna break the pallet. I just not know how to fall scratch marks here. <laughs> so scratch marks, the thing that I just mentioned. Um no. <laughs> uh, when a survivor is sprinting, um, not just doing the normal walk speed. They leave scratch marks on the ground that you can follow. And he knows about this trap, but nobody else does. They leave scratch marks that they can follow. And it'll lead you basically right to them. They stay for a couple of seconds, but um, they generally go away after a little bit of time has passed. Right, that generator there has been done, so I'm going to try to start setting up traps on this side of the map. This. this is a little popular spot to so have them run through, jump down, and land in the trap. I That's something you never want to do as a survivor, is just immediately drop a pallet. Unless they are right on you. But right there, she had more than ample enough time, or more than ample time to get away. Basically, I just get a free pallet down out of that. Yes. Again, you don't want to put it right in the walkways. You kind of want to hide them a little bit. And that guy's caught in the trap, but I don't think I'll be able to get to him in time, no. Alright, so where's the third gen? The third gen's over there. Let me make sure there's nobody around here. Kind of a weird spot. Hopefully, catch that person off guard. And I've been right next to these two gins. I know they're not over here, so I'm gonna go over here and make sure that they're not touching this one. Or not. A little out of the way here and grab this trap. A little obnoxious that his power is so just not good, but you know. It is what it is. Can't have everyone be a really good killer. So they took down my trap over there. I haven't touched this one. So these two gens on this side are pretty good. They've, le they've left me with a pretty decent setup here. Um, they have to complete one more gen out of these three. And I can pretty easily patrol these. Hi there. So, uh... <clears throat> 
For anyone who has seen the game before and doesn't understand what that is or just doesn't really know what's going on, uh, that is a trick. Well, it's not really a trick, it's a technique called moonwalking. And this is. Somebody was running around here. Ha! I saw some scratch marks while I was running away on the ground, so I figured that there was another person around this area. But anyway, so uh, directly in front of you, as the killer, you have this little red stain, uh, is what it's called, and it's kind of just like an F, it's not, not really like an FV, it's just kind of a thing that shows the direction in which you are looking, uh, to give the survivors something to kind of know which direction you're going. Um, and you can use this to your advantage by putting it in one direction and then walking in the opposite direction and kind of trick the survivors into thinking that you are not really where you are, you know? So like, for example, I can kind of put it over here to make them think I'm going that way and then walk this way instead, and it's just something that's kind of tricky you can do. Oh, I don't want you. Damn it. Now I think... The other person should still be around this area. But imagine... Doesn't look like I didn't really want this guy again. Oh hey, there we go. Hi there, sir. Don't want you, go away. Where did your friend go? I don't know where his friend went, so I guess I'm just gonna hit him. I didn't want to keep tunneling this guy, but I don't know where his buddy went. And it's better to just kind of take the take the kill sometimes. Um, I did get to lure the guy out. But, like I said, I don't know exactly where he went, so... I know he's over here in this general area, though. I'm gonna give it a, one more little once-over. Check everything out. Alright. Now I'm gonna go back over to the other side. Since I've been patrolling this side pretty heavily... I don't think the, the other person, obviously, is not gonna be over here, so... Over here and give these two a look. -see. Give this side a look. -see. Yep. As expected. light of that area kind of fucked with me. Well, there's not a door over here, so... I'm gonna come to this door, which is already open. Damn. Then I'll go ahead and force him out. And then what I'll do is I'll throw this right here. On this side. Oh, hi. Alrighty. That wasn't too bad. I definitely could have pressured a little bit more there at the end, but, uh, you know. That's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Overall, I would say it was a decent game. Could utilize my traps a little bit more effectively, but, you know. We take those. And yeah, I, I didn't even need to play <laughs> another game. That should be more than enough to get my perk, yeah. Like these these map gamers. <laughs> uh, item is neat, but I don't know. I feel like you can just use your own knowledge, and then it wouldn't even matter. But uh, that'll be the first game. I'm gonna cut the recording here so that way it's easier to upload, and uh, I'll see you guys uh, in the next one.